This is cool. This is very, very cool. Slowly. Lancia Delta Intragale, 5,000 kilometers on the clock. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Y Details. I wish you could smell what I can smell because it smells old, but it smells very good. One thing I like to do at this point, uh, a bit of a habit of mine, and it's a good habit to get into if, if space and time allows, is the vehicle has been fully safely washed and decontaminated, it's been blown dry, and I'm now just out in the yard giving it one or two lengths in the car park on the brakes. The reason being the vehicle is going to be airborne for the next five or six days, and of course the wet discs will rust, they will oxidise, and they will be really thick, and this just prevents them from rusting up. Getting on late afternoon on day one. Polishing progress is slow so far. Working on some of the intricate areas in the front bumper, the side skirts. I want to try and get back to the habit of doing the slow, painstaking, sort of timely areas, the intricate areas first. And also, they're responding a lot nicer to what the metal panels are. The metal panels on the door here, just above my thumb, I've done a test section and it took some work. It took a lot of work. Now, as you can hear, we have a tumble dryer, but also someone is polishing. Uh, there's been lots of clues and a bit of insights to this previously, and some people have picked up on these clues. Second pair of headphones, a second wheelie stool. The fact I'm using my old quartz cable polisher. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Terry. The polishing introduced Terry very briefly earlier. So let's uh, bring him in. Hello, now then. So, white details is uh, team of two. So, people have picked up on some of the uh, 
There's been like little hints in previous videos. I've said there's lots going on behind the scenes and some people have spotted the fact that there's a second pair of headphones and a new pair of headphones that I'm using. My old polisher, obviously Terry's been on the mini Rupes as I've been on the port cable. There's a second stool. Uh, white details, the, the, the YouTube channel, this has actually grown the business to a bit of a monster and it's, it's been, now is the time. Now is the time I needed help to get some uh, hands on deck uh, and actually sorry, and help reduce these time scales because as of today, mid-July, we're into February, into 2018, which is great for business, but not so good because I'm losing lots of work. So, so a bit of a quick fire, if we can, a bit of a quick fire Q&A. Favorite thing about detailing? Favorite thing about detailing? If the detail. Is, if there is one, the <laughs> detail. I like the, I like the bringing something back. If, back to life. If you had to explain detailing in three words, what would it be? Revival. Tiring. It's tiring, extremely tiring, and I love the finish, the reward. The Rewarding. reward is worth the hard work. What was the first one? And the reviving. Revival, tiring, and satisfaction. So yeah, the videos probably make these journeys, the, the car from A to B look quite easy, but as the guys in the industry know, it's not an easy job. Uh, we're just sort of working together. Terry's got previous experience already and background in his industry. So two heads on one job. We're sort of working together, ironing out some of the uh, the small details and changing a few things and introducing a few new things. Uh, but so far, great, uh, great partnership. Uh, if you had a hundred thousand pounds to spend on one vehicle, what would it be? Oh God, how long do I have? Audi R8, uh, Range Rover uh, Sport. Um, Daily, uh, Range Rover and R8. Big lump to wash and keep clean though, that's the trouble. I'm doing it. this job, I think we want yeah. something. Uh, a mini. <laughs> a mini. <laughs> a mini. When did you, when was you first introduced to what details? What was your first job here? Uh, we did an R8, funny enough, didn't we? I think we did an R8 the first week. And it was. Daytona Grey yeah. Pearl, Audi R8. And I'll flash a picture of it here. In. On, right on Terry's face. Um, yeah, so that is now, that's got to be mid-twenties on the vlog. This is vlog 33. 34, 34. So a good long time ago. So the Bentley Brooklands, the Maserati Quattroporte, the Black Audi R8 Spider, everything. Terry's been here, it's been the two of us. We've not actually got any more jobs in yet. We're sort of partnering on the one car together, just so we're sort of ironing out those final details together. The idea is, of course, we've got a white detail package here on the Lancia. There's a three bay unit, there's a single bay next door. It can be that we'll take on more new car preps and more bits on the side to reduce this massive work that's been created in the inquiries which I can't can't take on and accommodate uh, but actually I'm really enjoying <clears> this experience <throat> as well they are long days they are long weeks and actually having some company and actually ideas are bouncing off each other it's a second pair of eyes for quality control uh, and believe me he has caught me out a few times <laughs> what else one final question <laughs> one final question you did you ask me early, didn't you? What was good? They said, said three of questions. It was. What, uh, how what old are you? Uh, yeah, how old are you? You don't need to know. I don't use that. <laughs> what, what, would, what would you say has been the most. Uh, sort of the biggest thing you've picked up and the biggest thing you've taken away with you so far? Oh, easily the taking it to a much higher level, which I've learned from you. Um, I'd got to a fair level before and just seeing the difference in quality, the clarity of the paint to take it to that extra level, mm. which I've learned from you, which There's, is fantastic. Yeah. And still learning. I'm well, as, we, as we all are, as yeah. I am. And that, that's, that is, uh, there's so many different levels in detailing that someone can detail a car. Someone who's been validating for 30, 40 years has got a polish that is detailing the car. There's so many different parameters and variables and things that can differentiate a good job and a great job. I've spoken about, I've spoken about that before on the channel. Um, so no, it has been, we've, we've worked together uh, and finding some great results. So yeah, I mean, here's to, here's to the future of white details. <laughs> That's when the music kicks back to. with that a long time spent on the front bumper there are some bigger panels for the three inch and lots of hybridable areas for the hybrid hybridable you can have that 
it's a funny turn of events really. The test section on the wing, which I will show you through shortly, has a clear coat, but the bumpers and the sills, so far Terry's been on the sills and down the side. Same story, paint transfer. So they're obviously a single stage, uh, not lacquered, but the plastics are actually responding a lot better to what the door did. As you can see, the mesh grill here and the side repeater have been removed. This allows the edges to be hybrided easily, safely. And also the spotlights down the bottom here. Also, this allows the edges to be tied up and polished. This has all been hand polished inside here. So when the, the light cluster's back in, so when the mesh is back in, the light cluster's back in. When they were still in there, there was all the dirt, there's all the crusty bits around the sides and the back. So it's just an easy way to make sure it's a thorough job. Uh, where's the light? Let me show you the door. First pad polish combination was made on the near side door. We can see all the swirls and the marks and the abrasions. It's really bad. As we go up, the edges haven't been done, but this panel has. This took a lot of work and actually you can see that it is actually a metallic paint. There's me thinking it's a solid paint. Obviously no chance to see the metallic here, but once it's all cut and knocked back, you can see lots of work to get to this level. You don't want to be going too aggressive. It's a, a foam cutting pad multiple times over to nourish and look after the paint rather than going guns blazing uh, and cutting it heavy. The edges still need doing down the bottom. The corner needs doing down here. The lip on the top of the door edge there needs doing. But if the rest of the car can follow suit with this combination and result, we are on to a winner. So the bolt's gonna be hit with the five inch pad, three inch pad will tackle above the swage line, down the sides, under the mirror. And then the hybrid, this edge here is a pretty delicate little ledge to be able to get to. So you'll see me hybridering this panel. Are you laughing at me saying hybridering? Yeah. It's a proper word. Hybridering. Now the entire front door has been cut. Very pleased with the outcome there, but looking forward to seeing it refined. We move on to the wing. Side vent removed. Indicator removed. To allow a much easier, better access. But that said, there are some nice intricate areas here to navigate. This edge on the wing next to the door. A big, nice, thick overlapping tape to protect the door paint whilst the hybrid does its magic down the channels.
Rinsing and compounding progressing nicely. Here we have Terry. What we're doing is removing the vents from the bonnet. The bonnet is next up. So this is obviously to aid the assistance of the polishing on the perimeter of the vents. It's going to allow in here to be polished up and cleaned. It's going to reduce the risk of damage in any edges. Obviously it would tape it up anyway. But for the sake of half a dozen bolts and a few screws, it's very much a worthwhile thing. Also, it's going to allow us to polish the inside of the bonnet uh, more thoroughly because there's a big plastic housing on there. And that can all be all sorted as one. Final vent coming out. A vent, a door, a vent, a door. If you see here, we have a white cluster of something down the side. If you can make out there, it's a cluster of cobwebs. So, easy done. A precision screwdriver with a microfiber cloth wrapped around it. It's gone. If you thought detailing was a nice, clean, easy job and this place is always immaculate, you'd be wrong. That after a day and a half's polishing. On that note, I will update you with the latest on the spurring bucket, those that have been here before. We know what this is about. Bear in mind, on the Lancia, the only areas that are single stage paint without the clear coat are the bumpers, front and rear bumper and the side skirt. This is after the polishing so far. So you can see how much is collected. The wet sides attract the dust as the pads are spurred in the bucket. Really doing a nice job. on it earlier and I want to just revisit some of your questions that came in on the comments on YouTube. Obviously people have spotted me using the portal table 7424. This thing must be 
11 years old, 12 years old. It was my very first polisher I bought. Obviously, you've got the three inch spot pad, five inch backing plate if you wish. It's all adjustable, it's interchangeable. Flexibility is there. Obviously, the reason I'm using it is because the Rupes Mini, I would say Terry's using it. It's actually here. I'm sort of settled with this one for the time being. Terry will be using that very shortly. Not in yet today so far. But it's a breath of fresh air picking this back up. It just shows what can be achieved with the correct combination of pads, products, compounds, technique. It doesn't really, it's nice to have a bigger throw of the Rupert's kit and the better balancing and sort of how the the ergonomics are better, let's say. And also on that, this is the latest replacement for the microfiber, the McGuire's microfiber disc. Obviously, there's been lots of talk on the channel and comments and messages coming in about the discontinuation and the uh, McGuire's pad being made obsolete, which is a shame. I'm sure they may come back. I think it's, it's, a, it's a strange move for McGuire's. Obviously, it's all money related and finance and uh, sales. But an example I actually did use once but never used the footage, it's like a Home Depot, a, a, a DIY shop, stocking decorating equipment, and you've got your, you've got your paint trays, you've got your paint, you've got your masking tape, and you've got your sandpaper, all the accessories and the pits and the tools that you need to decorate your room. You've got your rollers, you've got your foam, you've got everything else, but the only rollers they'll do are a five inch roller with no brushes. So you're expected to decorate the whole room with one big seven, eight, nine inch roller without the inch clip, one inch brush, three inch brush to do the edges and the details around the light switches behind the radiators. That's the same with the detail in terms. So McGuire's what they've done is discontinuing their three inch pad. They're expecting us to do a whole car with this sort of size pad, which as we know, it, it's not possible. So it's a strange move, but I'm sure they'll be back. So this is the Lake Country. The Lake Country, I've been through three or four of them now. Didn't want to talk about them straight away, I was testing. I must have had half a dozen replacement microfiber pads in the time, but this one is standing the test of time. It's cutting well, it's finishing nicely, on par with the, the longevity of the Meguiar's pads. I'm struggling to find them in stock, so I'm guessing lots of you are using these already. I actually had a big backlog of stock from the Meguiar's, which is why it's taken me so long to get onto the Lake Country. But what information I can find about the Lake Country pads, I will drop down below. But for now, let me show you the latest 50-50. So it's more hybrid work. We're on the front door, kill the brightness. Don't even need the uh, force light to see the damage. Can you see? The white haze coming off the light there, if we pan across, white haze stops because that's been cut and polished yet again, yet to be refined. Nice detail and again it's these sort of details that make a good job a great job. One of the things the uh, client has actually asked for on this job, there is some silver foil on the uh, rear quarter windows here on the inside. That wants to be removed if possible, both sides. And they're also the rear registration plate holder. That's very close to the paintwork and I wouldn't be surprised if there's sort of marring on the back of this uh, surround from the metal. This tape wants lifting as well, but riveted. So onwards with the surgery. Another non-original uh, part apparently they want to remove it. Uh, registration surround and the sticky stuff is off. It just needs to sort and clean and tidy in. Unfortunately it has marred where it's been abraded on the paint on the edge there. Just taking a slight beating and uh, do what we can about that. But this plate, this side is original, this side isn't. This one's coming off, that one's staying because actually that's bolted as well and that one looking through under the trim on the other side isn't. Now onto the exhaust box, the trim itself, the exhaust just a little bit tarnished, underside of that will be cleaned up nice and the lip 
And then the box will be fresh, cleaned and protected. So when the vehicle's on the ground, it's still visible, but it'll be bright and shiny. Spoiler removed with four bolts. The base plates will be polished up with the hybrid. They're quite messy. And then the spoiler itself should uh, come up nice. Funny old progress in this one. This time last week we were on the Vantage, which I'll flash up now. This time last week we had the cutting completely. It was de-dusted, the engine bay had been done and refinement had started. It is approaching half past two on Wednesday. Uh, cutting this, there's so many panel edges and ledges and angles as I said earlier, and we've removed so much off the car, which is great for the safety aspects and allowing it to be a better correction. But it's all added to the time scales, uh, and there is actually a lot of paint as well. Uh, so as Terry's up on the roof doing the uh, about to do the big bad, big pad stuff on the bulk, I'm still finalising the intricate three-inch and hybrid work on the on the edge of the bonnet. It is 5.27 Wednesday and we have the vlog episode 33, this is 34, dropping live, I promised social media it will be on at 5.30. So here we go. To the bottom, previously unlisted to public. 90s Aston Martin muscle meets the white detail vlog 33, detail guards. All the information. Do check below in the description, by the way. I've got the, all the information about the rotary extension bars and what the polishes are used and what the vacuum is and what camera gear I use. And there's a lot of information down below, lots of repetition questions coming through about all the gear. And you look down below in the description, and you should find it. Anyway, privacy is public, thumbnail, save. Here we go. So the time, so the time is 1728. Let's give it a refresh and then let's check back in half an hour. Okay, half an hour later, we're on. Give it a refresh. Two, five, three, with four comments and 27 likes. Cheers guys, thanks for the support. As always, I'm out of here now. I've just run around the land to see the intro garlic with a three minute video for the customer at the end of day three as an update sent via WhatsApp. All the little details here at Whitey Tells, back in tomorrow. This car seems to be never ending. Lots of the correction, I think I've gone over it a lot now already. Very bitty, very complex. Last area will be this uh, struttle on the front windscreen. Last sort of intricate, tricky area to navigate. The rear deck, this has been exposed because of the spoiler's been removed. These brackets have been polished. The edge there, the edge here behind. Everything's ready for refining. This needs doing inside of here. Just a busy, busy, complex thing to navigate. But I think when it's finished and it's refined down, it's gonna be ever so, ever so rewarding. Meanwhile, Terry's been in the engine bay getting a head start on sort of the anti-sticky stuff. So some of the grease and some of the, the, uh, the ignition cables, coils here, we can see they were very tarnished and sort of sticky. Limited as to what water was used in the engine in the initial rinse. Pretty much the perimeter was done and the underside of the bonnet. Before we go on to the engine dressing, panel wipe the whole car, blow the whole car down, and then we're on to, finally, some refining.
commentary. 20 past five. 20 past five. Thursday, 20 past five. We have, we have, I think, some progress. Some refining done. The engine bay is dressed and cleansed and polished where possible, but the refinement is looking sharp. It's a problematic paint, really isn't one you can just jump in with the usual combination. You have to sort of think about it and scratch your head. A bit of a test for us both, to be honest. Light clusters are going back in now. We have a new Intergali badge on the rear end. The light clusters, they've been removed to be flushed on the inside and out. Registration surround sorted. Still got the spoiler to go on. The last bit of refining that needs to be done is this inch down the back here. So we are end of play Thursday, back in tomorrow. Wheels, interior, coatings, protection, glass, full lot. There's gonna be some work on Saturday to do as well. But for now, I actually have an endurance race at PF International Karting Track, which is 40 minutes away, so I need to get wrapped up, swept up, packed up, locked up, and we'll see you in the morning. Cheers, Terry. Okay, welcome to PFI, uh, Fullbeck in Lincolnshire. My actual first unit, my first premises for detailing was in Fullbeck. Uh, and welcome to PFI, which is an international circuit to do, well, European international race days here. And if you've never been, it's awesome. Should have bought the drone. It's a big, big complex. And this is my team man, it's James. Race over. Knackered. Where do we finish, boys? Uh, fifth. Yeah, fifth. fifth. Good effort. Out of how many? Uh, 16. 16. 16 cars. Time for a beer and fish and chips, I think. Good morning. It is Friday. I've been to four. My ears to be lowered. Refined. Fully. Almost there. Machine work, with the exception of some eyebridery now on the door shuts. There's some nice big flat panels here to be able to. You can see how you can see how hazy they are. So it's a nice, easy three, four inches to clean these up. Whilst I'm on the door shuts, Terry is on the wheels, applying some GTEC C5 wheel armor, some pretty slick tires cleaned up, all the brake pitting removed, tar deposits removed. Before 
any work is done to the interior. Look at this. It's immaculate. Suede Alcantara Recaros. Nice HF detail in the headrest. There's not a blemish really inside. There's a bit of surface dust. The blast will need doing inside and out. The leather on the steering wheel will be cleansed. The usual blow vac. Yeah, the usual vac and the airline under the seats to remove any loose parts that are hidden out of sight. I mean, look, even the rear door cards still have the protective film. Final touches. Terry's been on the glass, and I've spent probably 35 minutes with the toothpick and the toothpickery. Toothpickery being previous polish residue that's been built up around the window rubbers up the top and the roof around, around the badges and around the grill. Anywhere that previous polish residue is built up on the lettering on the underside of the wind mirror around the light clusters. That's better. Battery just died. So with the cocktail stuff done, the toothpickery finished out the way, I'm left with stuff like this. The rear grab handle, you can see it's patchy and chalky, previous polish residue on the sides. It, it won't dress over, you won't be able to put a, a trim dressing over the top of this, so you need to lift it first. I've touched on this in a previous episode, just touch over it again. What you're gonna want for this is a section of magic sponge, a textured magic eraser. I've got a link down in the description below in the video. And some APC, Allen A and B tiles. Just to wet the sponge. You never wanna use this on paint. Don't ever use this on paint work. So all I need to do is just lightly wipe over the entire handle. It's gonna clean it as well, if anything. To also remove these stains. Obviously taping off the paintwork because you don't want this making contact with the freshly detailed paintwork and this will be leaving it uh, looking fresh uh, and it's up to you if you want to use a trim dressing or not but because it's already taped up and easy to apply at this stage I will be applying g Technique C4 Trim Restore. So give this a quick wipe down. A bit dry, you can see it's raw, natural, clean state. And now I'm going to add some of the uh, G10 C4 trim restore with a handy foam swab, which is uh, sort of perfect for the application. Two minutes later. Just now got to tidy the gunk inside the lock. grill here you'll see it's missing a tiny bit of paint so a bit of satin paint on there will uh, finish the job off nicely Dropped off, that's through next door now, waiting on uh, a start on first thing Monday morning. There's been a Malibu Blue TTRS and an Avis Silver RS4 Cabriolet owned by the same couple who want to book the vehicle in for the vehicles, in for the white detail treatment to restore the full thing, but understand that the earliest availability is nearing on spring, spring 2018. They're keen happy to leave a deposit, happy to secure some dates uh, and take the next availability, which is incredible. Incredible commitment. So we're left with one finalized, ticked off, toothpicked, wiped down, Lancia Delta Integrale Evolution 2. The vehicle I believe is a 1993. 
as I've already said, it's covered 5,600 kilometers. It's a new purchase for a customer of mine. It's another one that's coming in from overseas. Full major paint correction, as safe to do so. The removal of the defects, the surface defects, the paint protection, the interior, the glass, the engine bay, which took a lot of doing. The wheels have been off the vehicle. The arch assembly has been flushed and dressed and cleansed. The underside of the bonnet, the inside of the door sills, they've been polished by hand, if not machine, where space allows. It's been a test, it really has. It's been uh, a difficult job the first initial pad polish combination for the correction for the for the machine polishing was a bit of a okay one step forward and three back we need to think about this it's not responded the way it probably ought to but it just didn't respond that well now this leads me on to uh, a relentless amount of emails that actually people detailing it's it's becoming saturated the market every man and his dog is setting out it's starting it's great that people are doing their own thing and sort of the entrepreneurial business side and want to do their own venture but it isn't easy it's not as straightforward as it perhaps comes across the likes of my channel and other fellow detailers their channel their instagram their case studies of these reports and details it perhaps comes across as uh, yeah i can have a go at that uh, and uh, make a quick dollar it's not the case it comes with years of experience years of mistakes it leads me to a phone call in particular uh, but along with dozens of emails every month for people starting out and <clears throat> while you're in the industry and setting up and asking for advice and what to do with insurance and i want to help where i can and it is again i've said this before it is impossible to come back to you all but a phone call uh the name was dave didn't, didn't get any business dave was starting out he's based down south and really wanted some advice and what to use for polishing what compounds, what pads, and what microfibers do we use, and how do you set up, and how do you do the marketing, and okay, well, what's your experience, where have you come from, how many cars have you done already? Well, I, I look after my own car, do my own car, um, and it's clayed, I clay bar it and glaze it and wax it. Okay, so how many cars have you machine polished? No, no, I've never machine polished a car in my life. Great, okay, so you're going into this new venture, you've got hundreds and hundreds of pounds to spend on equipment and gear, and you've never machine, you've never put a machine polisher to a car. You want to become a detailing business. This is half the problem with this industry. Those that have been balloting for 20, 30, 40 years have got a polisher. Everyone's a detailer. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. And I've said that before. They worry about buying the Rupes Bigfoot and the, the, the Mini and the Hybrid and spending all this money. And well, actually, well, why not just buy a, a, beginner, a beginner level DA that allows you to interchange back in place i said earlier in the video about the port cable which is probably no longer available but an equivalent das 6 um, it allows you with a five inch backing plate and a three inch backing plate to have the flexibility to change to do the cutting in of the small pad and go on to the big pad rather than spending oh, 800 900 pound on rupes kit when you've never held a machine polish or never polished a car you've got to start somewhere and that really is jumping into the deep end and i'd say give it two months and you'd, you'd soon learn that it's not all you think it is. And also Dave was asking about the possibility of training. Now, someone for someone that's never picked up a polisher, there's a long way to go. There's a lot to cover and finalize during the decontamination stage, the clay bar, the tar removal, the blowing of the vehicle dry. Uh, engine bay interior there's a lot of that to do before you can get to machine polishing but training there are lots of requests coming in for training and people shadowing and it's not something i've just had time to do i've not had time to accommodate this previously uh, but of course now there are two of us there have been instances i have had meetings with various profile people whereby terry of course has been left to his devices and i'm able to sit on the phone for an hour to discuss uh, a client's needs i'm able to nip out and do things and work continues so this leads to the possibility of training in the near future i've already got a bit of a spreadsheet and a database of those that have shown interest but if there is of interest for the likes of dave email me email me with the subject of said email as white details training tell me who you are tell me your experience where you've been what you've already done what you've how far you can go already what you want out of training where you're located i can't promise anything i'm not promising anything but at least then i've got options to be able to say peter james sarah come forward we've got a day we can cover this and we're trying over that and 
I don't know, try something different. So with that said, I am gonna quickly scoot off. There is lots of questions from the q and I ought to really add, but I'm conscious this video is going on a bit now anyway. As always, do check out Instagram and Facebook for daily insights and updates. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up down below. It'll help the channel to grow. Share the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And the next episode will be live, not live, recorded from Wackstock. So I'll see a few of you there.